Good afternoon. Hi. My first LACNIC, I have extremely enjoyed myself so far, and uh, thanks to a lot of you. Um, so Belize, considerations and challenges for resource acquisition and management as a small country. Uh, as I met many of you this week, everybody asked, well, where is Belize? So I decided to change the presentation slightly and show you where Belize is. So we're English, we're very unique. We're English speaking ex-British colony, very small, uh, both in size and population, um, pretty much aligned with the Caribbean uh, community in terms of uh, culture, but geographically centra centralized around our um, Spanish speaking neighbors. Um, they also provide connections to the rest of the world as well. We have connections to Mexico, to Guatemala, and then out via Arcos to US. Um, small in terms of GDP and GNI, and uh, as that will demonstrate itself uh, a, a developing nation by, by all elements. So jump right into it. The market size. 10 years ago, we had two providers, uh, very limited wireless access, uh, limited XDSL access, uh, and according to the ITU, we had around 10.6% penetration. Um, the regulator at the time had the vision to open up the market in terms of um, allowing more providers to do different services, and was born um, major cable companies, another carrier, and some other smaller ISPs. To that came the challenge of gaining public IP, specifically public IP assignments um, from LACNIC, as we were there in part of the LACNIC region. Um, so myself, as an independent, independent consultant, worked for many of these um, companies, if not all of them. And we, well, I specifically found the challenge of trying to get enough public IPs to satisfy the needs of these companies. Many of them had been doing some sort of um, uh, um, internet access, but extensively using NAT, not even carrier NAT, just NAT. So I started looking at in investigating applying for IP to different companies, and I came up against our community rules, which I didn't know at the time. I thought it was the guys at LATNIC. Um, but as I delved more and more into it, I actually did a country study to see who had IPs in Belize, because I really didn't know. So we'll jump forward two slides, and I know it's very hard to read from here, but basically what that shows is, is every single c company in Belize, operating in Belize, that has wireless, that has IP assignments. Now, as you can expect, the incumbent provider who, was owned by, who is owned by the government, BTL, has around 80% of all the IPv4 addresses. I only, I only used IPv4 because all of these elements also have IPv6 addresses. Um, so IPv4 specifically, um, the incumbent, which has between 30 and 30 and 35 percent of the market has 80 percent of the resources in terms of IPv4, and that presented a hell of a challenge to some of the smaller providers trying to give, trying to basically compete. So, but as I was doing that exercise, I found this problem, which was that we almost had as many IPs being used by what I term ghost companies registered in Belize got resources well before legitimate companies living, working in Belize, and using them from everywhere, as you can see here, from Chile, Lithuania. The one that says none in Belize was all over the place, including Iran, um, Hungary, uh, Bolivia, many of which are well outside the LACNIC region. Um, so I inquired, I presented my findings to, to the LACNIC staff and said, hey, um, how come you're giving us such a hard time to get IPs, but these guys seem to have no problem? And um, we had a very interesting dialogue back and forth for some, for some time now. Um, to give you an idea of the, the total size, um, my research showed, well, that, that's a complete to date. Um, my research showed being used, utilized in Belize at present is 52% of all the IPs that are assigned to Belize according to LACNIC. That 4% discrepancy was, I verified all my information against other databases, and I found that there was about 4% of IPs out there that really don't know. They say they're Belize, but because of the, the in, interesting information in the previous panel, they probably weren't, they're probably not. So, these are the challenges that we found in Belize. 
generally applying for IPv6, IPv4, and ESN resources from LACNIC. Not through no um, issues with LACNIC, but the fact that we were very late in the game, very late in terms of developing. As you saw at the beginning of that curve, in terms of local companies owning their, or having LACNIC resources, there was maybe two that were operating in Belize. The rest of them, um, myself and other cross settles, helped, helped to develop um, this. So there's limited of no public knowledge of the LACNIC community, what it does, what it is, what it represents, especially from a developmental point of view. So I said there's a need for further development of how LACNIC interacts with its members with respect to policy. Uh, I've been part of the forum for some time now, and I still think there's a lot of work for us to do in terms of um, homogenizing how we present stuff to be able to get more participation from, from our members. Um, we came late to the game, very limited IP, IPv sources left, uh, no real visible enforcement of rules if they are any with respect to LACNIC region. Um, no rules seem to limit the percentage of resources being used within a country if applied within that country. Um, no visible audit of the use of resources being utilized within LACNIC community. Uh, ghost companies, like I mentioned before, um, a lot of these ghost companies, uh, you just look them up and you can tell off the address that's listed that they're an offshore company registered. Um, so people were just deciding, you know what, it's so much easier to get IPs in LACNIC than in RIPE or somewhere else. Let's just go there, grab some IPs, and we'll use them somewhere else. So existing IPs were given very limited resources, um, much, to our, much to our frustration. Um, and there seems to be no recourse for us to challenge and say, like, hey, you just gave resources as late, I will tell you, as late as this year in April, two companies were given to both, 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 both of them are ghost companies, um, as I updated my information for this presentation. So we still have an ongoing challenge um, that we all have to, have to take um, part of. So the, the opportunity, as I see, because I, I don't like people that just come up here and say, what do we do wrong, or why, what, how can we do it right? So in terms of how we feel, because I did discuss this with our wider community, um, was um, we need to use the NACNIC policy to propose changes. Um, this became very, very succinct to me. As part of this, as a part of this, um, this event, I realized how, how important the PDP is and the actual forum is. And what I was more alarmed by was how few people actually put forward stuff. It seems to be the same people over and over again, which is very interesting. So I engage our, uh, the network operators, regulators, government agents to support LACNIC efforts. And I must give Oscar his due. His recent um, visit to the country uh, made every effort to meet all of these uh, different bodies, um, which was very, very encouraging. Uh, employ LACNIC app. Um, one of my comments, to the to the LACNIC staff was the LACNIC app for this event is extremely good, updates every two seconds it seems, and makes an excellent effort at keeping us engaged. And I think we need to sort of broaden that back out to, to help engage our members. Um, engage member of Chamber of Commerces and Associations, I don't know what you call them here, um, but basically they're business entities that are our customers, either directly or indirectly. Um, and adapt a more rigorous know your member during and after the application process, as in other RIRs. One of the reasons I identified why we are targets in LACNIC is because other RIRs are a lot more stringent, especially when it comes to getting more addresses. Um, helped develop human capital in country and in English. Again, we know this problem very well because we live in Central America, but we speak English. Um, and I have lobbied LACNIC to get more content in English and in all the, in, in all the, the, the languages that, that we support as a community. Um, to use LACNIC members to champion efforts in country, especially small countries, everybody knows everybody in the community, um, and encourage more members and entities to take an active part in LACNIC Community Forum and the PDP. So in summary, Belize, like all small members of LACNIC, developing in, in the context of ITC sector, we find ourselves playing catch up with the rules made very difficult for us. Uh, the LACNIC staff have listened to our plea and understand the challenges, but we are governed by the rules 
but as us as the members have created to govern us. The representation on our various bodies, boards and bodies have little or no representation from the Caribbean. After this, which is my first LACNIC, um, the, the biggest thing I've, I've taken away from this is um, that the body is extremely vibrant and it's a, it's, it's a living being. And in terms of change, the only way to make change is to um, lobby through policy and follow up. And that's the only way to affect change. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that I have met so far. And um, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, my lactic is not done yet, another day or so. But thank you very much. Thank you very much, Etienne.